Hi, I'm Jason Mears and this is Windows Server 2019 Second Domain Controller, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So in this video we've already added the Active Directory uh, domain services and DNS but what and we've already joined it to a domain but what we haven't done is made it a domain controller this is just a server which is part of a domain so we're going to add it to an existing domain in the previous video we just created a new domain in new forest this is an additional one in an existing domain so we pick the domain name of active directory dot local and we're currently logged on on a local account as administrator. You can see here that that isn't enough. What we need to do is authenticate to the domain we're going to join as the administrator for that domain. So this is the Active Directory administrator, not the local administrator. So now we've authenticated, we should be able to move through uh, the next set of pages. So we'll, uh, we'll stick with those settings there, DNS server, global catalog. We're not going to use a read-only domain controller at this point, and we're going to join the default first site. Again, we're not going to bother about DNS delegation. This is purely an internal domain um, using a .local address, and we're going to replicate from any domain controller. Now, I had a problem here in that I couldn't contact the original domain controller, which is odd because we've um, been able to authenticate it in the previous step. I gave it a little bit of time, did a restart and tried it again and now when I look for an, uh, an additional domain controller and click next it found it fine so I guess that Active Directory was still settling down and hadn't kind of uh, sorted itself out so if that doesn't work first time just give it a little bit of time or maybe do a restart so it tells us that some permissions are not compatible with older versions of Linux and uh, NT4 which we saw in the previous time we uh, created a domain controller Again, not, not a concern unless you've got older NT4 servers or older versions of the Linux Samba app, uh, service. Samba being the Linux version of the SMB protocol, so file and printer sharing for Microsoft networks, but delivered from a Linux server. So it's now time to log in, and you'll see that we're logging into the domain, Active Directory. And in fact, if you check, the local administrator account is, isn't available anymore once a machine has become a domain controller. You only have the option of logging in as a domain admin, not a local admin. That's only for domain controllers, though. Any other machine joining the domain should still have its local accounts intact. So back to Server Manager. You see that this is our second Active Directory domain controller. I call this AD102, part of the Active Directory local domain. It's just taken a little bit of time to load, but now the, down the left hand side you can see the Active Directory domain services and DNS services, the same as we had on the original or the first domain controller. I'm going to go back to those Active Directory tools. Again, I prefer to pin those to start or to the desktop. And in the previous video, we showed in sites and services, um, we had directory services replication set up, but there was nothing to replicate to. If we just open this up a little bit and you click on the blue NTDS settings belonging to each server, what we'll see is that there is um, an item there automatically generated Automatically generated means that something called the KCC, the Knowledge Consistency Checker, part of the Active Directory service, has created a connection to other domain controllers to replicate. We only had one there, but if I give it a little bit of time and come back, we'll now see that the second server has, and we can click on Replicate Now, and we can replicate data backwards and forwards between both of those domain controllers so they synchronize with each other. So we didn't have it there originally, took a little bit of time, and then it appeared through something called the Knowledge Consistency Checker, which creates those connections. For the most part, you can just ignore them. You don't need to do anything with them. You just need to check that they exist and that replication can happen between them. If we now look in Users and Computers, there's something else here I want to look at called Operations Masters. So we have a RID, a PDC, and an Infrastructure. Uh, so these are uh, cases where a domain controller is responsible for a specific job, 
and the domain control that's responsible for that specific job is called the operations master. So RID looks after security identifiers or SIDs. PDC emulates an old uh, NT4 domain control or provides some of those services. And the infrastructure role, again, is, a, is another infrastructure related role that only one domain controller is responsible for at once. But that's where you go and look at those settings or find those. If you want to view it, from another domain or from the viewpoint of another domain controller you can select those options there but that was the windows server 2000 uh, 2019 domain controller um, video part of the vsphere 7 home lab series